Hello there my RPG lovers and welcome to another video. You might remember a couple of videos I did about a game called Forsaken Realms Exodus Rising. In the meantime, the name of this game has been changed to Forsaken Realms Varin's Call and we have some really interesting updates that I'm going to cover in this video. But I'm also going to talk about everything we know about this game so far to remind ourselves what's it all about. Varin's Call has been in development for quite a while, around 6 or 7 years to be more exact. But during that time period, the game has undergone some major changes in design and almost the entire development team changed in the past couple of years. So technically, the current version of the game has been in development for a couple of years I guess. By the looks of things, the progress which the game is making seems really solid and each time we get a new devlog video we can see a lot of improvements. We still don't have any info about the exact release date though. However, we know for sure that this game won't be releasing in early access, it will come out as a full product. Besides that, the game will also have a fully playable demo, which is always great to hear. I love the fact that more and more games have playable demos nowadays, because it's basically like a form of insurance to players. And the developers have to put a lot of trust into their product by releasing free demos, so that's always a big plus in my book, especially when it comes to small studios. Putting that aside, let's talk about the game itself. First and foremost, Warren's Call is a story-driven RPG. It's a semi-open world RPG that opens up as you progress through the main storyline. The game is set in a high fantasy world called Leda. You play as a mercenary who is providing his services to the city of Warren. And speaking of Warren, this city is the main location in the game. The city of Warren has a couple of districts and not all of them are accessible right from the start. This kinda reminds me of Gothic 2, maybe that's one of the reasons why I'm really excited to play this game. Gothic 2 is probably the best example when it comes to this particular style of level design and how good it can be. You need to do some main story content before some parts of the map become accessible but you still have a lot to explore right from the start. Baratrum Forest is the first area that you get to explore in Varin's Call and you also have a nearby village. There are big boss fights in the game that usually serve to push the main story forward and unlock new areas. Besides the main quest, the game has side quests and a lot of things to discover by just exploring as you would expect in an RPG. We can see the variety of different areas, some of them have really dense environments, while others seem to be a lot more open. When it comes to characters and the story, the game won't be fully voice acted, but some characters will have a couple of dialogue lines to greet you and stuff like that. Although this is not yet completely decided, according to the newest devlog video. This is not something that came as a surprise to me because voice acting is really expensive, especially for smaller studios. And good voice acting is even more expensive, so take that as you will. Speaking of things that one would expect to find in an RPG, Varin's Call has a very deep character creation. If you watched my first video about this game, you might remember how the character creation menu looked before. To be honest, even this version seemed pretty decent. However, the character creation menu has undergone some major changes. As you can see for yourself, it's night and day difference, not just when it comes to all the options you get for customizing your character, but character models have been updated quite drastically. It's still a very similar visual style, it's just a bit more realistic. The character models have noticeably greater graphical fidelity. The hairstyles no longer have that plastic look like before, and the faces look a lot better in general. The amount of options you get while creating your character is absolutely insane. I won't be able to show you everything in this video, but I suggest checking out their devlog, I'll leave the link in the description. There's a ton of different sliders and options and I'm sure this will make a lot of people happy. To be honest, I personally care a lot more about character customization in the game rather than character creation options. And luckily, Varin's Call will have some proper RPG customization as well, at least it seems so. Even from the earliest videos about the game, we could see some interesting armor sets and weapons. The game will have a crafting system as well, so we have that to look forward to. Varin's Call received a brand new UI system that you can see in their previous devlog. I think it looks pretty nice and it's really fitting for this style of graphics. I just hope it has auto hide option. I personally like to have a clear screen when I'm not doing anything particular in the game or when I'm just exploring. That way it becomes a lot easier to absorb the atmosphere of the game and immerse yourself in the world. And speaking of atmosphere, it's hands down one of the major strengths of this game. This high fantasy artistic style is very appealing to me. It definitely has some fable vibes, especially when I'm watching the footage of this forest area. And I believe the developers themselves said that fable was their big inspiration, so there you go. Exploring these areas look really cozy and immersive. 
and combined with a great soundtrack in the background, it looks and sounds like a wonderful fantasy environment. Here is a small sample of the soundtrack. But of course, things will get intense from time to time because you get to fight monsters and bad guys, so let's talk about the combat system. Judging by all the gameplay clips, I think the combat looks pretty solid in general. The game has different playstyles in terms of ranged and melee combats. Varen's Call has traditional RPG stats and the skill tree system, which is still not available for us to see. The brand new UI which they featured recently makes it really easy for you to see your character's stats, items and abilities. And once again, it's a huge difference compared to the last time we talked about the game. We still don't know a lot about the skill tree, but we can see some interesting abilities in various clips. In one of their newest clips, they were showcasing some destructible environments and alchemy skills. They also improved the animations and AI on some enemies. There is no way for me to talk in depth about the combat without actually trying it out, but all of these attacks seem well telegraphed. The dodge roll ability has some changes as well. The game had a step dodge animation at first and then they decided to stick with a more traditional dodge roll animation. However, just recently they decided to bring the step dodge back, so now we have both of these abilities. I personally always prefer the step dodge animation over dodge rolls, but having both abilities for different situations seemed to be a good choice. Besides the melee combat, we also have ranged gameplay. There are a bunch of clips where you can see some magical abilities. In one of the recent devlogs, they talked about the improved sound effect on fireballs. I think that's pretty good, but I would increase the duration of that impact sound a bit and maybe add a stronger reverb effect to make it sound more impactful. Speaking of spells, the Tornado Fire spell looks really fun to use, as well as some Frost spells that are being featured. As we could see in some previous videos, the players will be able to put magical enhancements on weapons like Fire and Frost, which is also something that we came to expect from most RPGs, but it's good to know. Just a few days after I released my previous video about this game, they published a new devlog video. That video showcased a couple of interesting new locations, like this dungeon area, and one big open location called South Whale. Before that, we could see a glimpse of a snowy location, which looks really different compared to everything else in the game. I always like to see different biomes in these types of games, because it keeps the exploration feeling fresh. The city of Varin is a focal point when it comes to the main story, so I would like to see some new footage of that city in the future. Although that can be hard to balance, because Varen's Call is a story-driven RPG, you have to keep the spoilers at minimum. And showing all locations in trailers and videos is probably not a good idea. Nevertheless, all of these locations seem very interesting to explore. By the way, the game won't have any mounts, you'll explore everything on foot. And this is something that I usually prefer in most RPGs. Even when the game has mounts, I prefer to explore most of the map on foot, unless the map is strictly designed to be explored with a mount. It depends on the game, of course, I don't hate mounts. The map in Varen's Call is handcrafted, there are no randomly generated areas, which is also a big plus in my book. So yeah, like I said, I'm getting some mixed vibes when it comes to the atmosphere of this game in general. By the looks of things, it's like Fable and Gothic 2 had a baby together and this is the result. I'm really looking forward to playing this game when it's done, and I hope they take all the time they need for development. Titan Rock, the studio behind Varen's Call, seems to be very professional and hardworking, as you can probably see from these devlog clips. It should be obvious, but I have to clarify that none of my videos about this game were sponsored or anything like that. I just love how this game looks and it's definitely one of my most anticipated upcoming RPGs for all the reasons I mentioned in the video. The game seems like it has a lot of soul, which is not something I can say that often. I will continue covering major updates and I can't wait to try out the demo when it comes out, so stick around if you want to see that. Check out their official YouTube channel if you want to see all the information from the devlog videos. I'll leave all the links in the description. Don't forget to subscribe for more RPG contents. If you want to support the channel in the long run, consider becoming a Patreon or a YouTube member. You can get your name on the end credits as well as some other perks like early access to videos, Discord roles, my plans for future content, etc. etc. That will be all and I'll see you in the next one.